Hello and welcome, Adam Thomas from Balancing Touch Reflexology. So good to see you and thanks for joining me today. Today we are going to explore the temperature in the feet and this is kind of a continuation on from last video which had to do with color and the previous videos what had and what we're doing is basically looking at visually what can we find out in the feet and the meaning behind them. So if you haven't seen those videos um, you're probably not subscribed to the channel so if you subscribe to the channel, it's free and it's easy. You just go down, hit the little subscribe and then the bell. So that way you'll get all the videos. Um, that way you can uh, catch up on any new foot talk that we have. So uh, let's get into looking at the temperature of the feet. So really great thing um, when we're checking and investigating and looking for little details in the feet is finding out the temperature of the feet because this will give us a lot of information about um, you know where possibly their posture is um, how their feet uh, maintain and hold heat or lose heat you know it just gives us some more information to work with here um, and it's one of the easiest things to check right so at the very beginning of a session I usually do a nice little you know, hi, how are you doing, foothold, and that gives me the information I need, right? I can tell is there, is there a difference between the top of the foot versus the middle versus the bottom, right? So um, it's a good opportunity to not have to take too much time and get a lot done, right? So here's a foot, um, and at the very beginning of a session, um, if they're wearing socks or not, or if you do a foot bath or not, that sort of thing, um, doesn't really matter, but uh, at the beginning of a session or the first time that I'm uh, greeting somebody's feet, um, this is a great uh, opportunity to take to get some information really quickly, right? So I hold at the top here, kind of like so, right? So both hands on both sides, that way I can see, okay, is this surface warmer or colder than this surface, right? So that gives me an indication there. And I'm kind of holding you know, above the, the ball of the foot here, so right about there. And that gives me an indication of what is the top of the foot feel like, right? And then I'm going to go down to the center of the foot here and feel like that way as well. Right, so if the client's foot is in front of me like this, I'm going to be kind of like this, this uh, setup here, right? If I'm working on the client's left foot, which this is a left foot, right? So it looks like that. Right, first one, I'm going to do something like that move down to second position and then I'll go right underneath and feel like that okay so what it looks like there is I'm going to take my right hand put it under their left heel and then this my left hand is actually going to feel the heel there so that's going to give me basically three regions right so you have one middle foot and the bottom of the foot and so that will give us some information right are the co are the toes colder than the middle and the heel, right? So if that's the case, um, it can mean there's a lot of like tired activity going on in the brain, right? Because these have to do with the head reflex, right? The head and shoulders and all that. So a lot of energy is not getting, um, circulation is not flowing nicely there, right? So you get a little bit of cold toes, right? So uh, brain activity, you're tired. Um, has something to do with pro probably with your nervous system uh, being disrupted in some way. So if your toes are not warm or they're feeling colder than the rest, that, that could be something to check there, right? And sometimes it can be uh, kind of like an unconscious uh, feeling as well. They, they might not even know it because they're quite tired. They're mentally, um, you know, exhausted, right? So. Uh, they might not be conscious that that's going on just over time slowly stuff has started to happen and um, their toes are now cold so that can be a good reflection on uh, what's going on in the top the head you know from here up uh, sort of issues is that um, looking at the middle of the foot here so I hold like that and if this part is cold so if the toes are you know feeling normal and the heels normal but the middle is cold then there's something going on sort of in the middle of the body, right? So this is reflected um, as the digestive system, right? The main parts of it anyway. You have the large intestine, you have small intestine, you have the duodenum, you have the stomach, right? You have all that liver all in here. So again, 
this system can be tired, can be kind of depleted, right? So um, that's something to look out there for. So if it's colder here in the center of the foot, um, digestive sort of issues going on there. And then if we look at the heel, and the heel is colder, uh, that is where your reproductive organs are. It's also where the bottom of the you know intestines are and stuff, but mostly um, on sides of the heels and around the back here is a reproductive area and stuff like that. So this could have to do with um, you know their creativity being you know not that well. It might be their hormone um, might be a little bit imbalanced, things like that. So stuff to check into. But just by doing a quick little you know how are you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm just gonna feel your feet here. Um, just that three little movements give you a whole quick overview of what's going on in the feet, right? So not only are we looking for temperature, we're also um, feeling for texture and elasticity, um, things like that, right? Like, does it feel healthy? Does it bounce back? Um, you know, does it feel like dough, sort of, you know, unhealthy? You can get all that information in a quick little scan of the feet, right? So now let's look into what uh, the different, um, you know, like a hot foot is or a cold foot or a sweaty foot. Okay, so let's go look at that next. So what does heat mean in a foot? You know, you're feeling it and you're feeling, whoa, it's kind of on the warm side. It's hot, right? So this is very similar to color in the feet, right? So temperature, frustration, and heat in the body creates, um, you know, the color reddish, for example. So you're probably, if you're feeling a warm foot or a hot foot, it's probably going to be um, on the red color because there's so much circulation going there. And it's basically, and again, the same as the color, it has to do with excess of um, energy, right? So too much circulation. So lots of people who are very active and stuff will have really warm feet. And if you have really cold feet, this is a good thing to do is to be more active to create more circulation, right? So if, uh, anyway, we're talking about hot feet, but um, people who do, do a lot of activity and stuff like that can end up with hot feet. And sometimes that energy doesn't get dispersed, right? It gets sort of like blocked down on their feet. So um, that's an indication to sort of be able to release some of this heated, pent up uh, frustration, right? So it has to do a lot with frustration, heat stuff, stuff that makes you boil, stuff that makes you kind of angry, those kind of things, right? Um, on the other spectrum of things too, like feet that are really cold, beyond that, they sometimes feel warm because they're trying to right, really heat up. So like freezing toes can feel really, really hot at the same time. So it's really, again, an investigation in with your client to find out what's what's going on there, right? But again, it has to do with an excess of energy, right? Like almost too much information, too much stimulation, too much frustrated energy being pent up in the body, right? So on the opposite side of that is cold feet, right? So cold feet is signs of lack of energy, right? So um, depleted, right? This person can be, tend to be kind of like in a depressive state, right? They don't want to do anything. They don't want to get out and move around and, and it's not too active, right? They're kind of, kind of scared to move around. They're kind of, you know, in, their mental state is not um, active as well, right? So they're, they're just kind of not wanting to move around and, and uh, you know, that sort of thing. Can also have to do with like emotional pain in the heart, right? So they don't want to, they don't feel moved to, to go in and, and move around, right? So the feet tend to get cold, lack of circulation, right? So for them, really, when I see people with cold feet, um, I always ask how active they are. And yes, the answer is usually they're not too active, right? Um, you know, lots of time they're sitting and laying around and they don't want to move and, and do too much stuff. So getting them to move and 
get circulation flowing down there is a, a good way to get those feet. And also, of course, doing reflexology treatment uh, on them, working all the areas, and that will bring circulation and some more even temperature back to their feet, right? So cold feet. So then we can come to feet that are kind of sweaty, right? They're kind of wet. They are damp. They feel sticky. They feel clammy, right? So this kind of a foot is signs of negative thought patterns, right? They are basically afraid to live life to its fullest, right? So there's lots of fear going on. There's lots of like sweating and just uncomfortableness in their feet, right? Uh, they might start to get little blisters because uh, when their feet are sweating a lot, like everybody's feet sweat quite a bit during the day, but but uh, what we're talking about here is an excess of sweat, right? So damp, they're always damp. So it's really good for these type of people to, um, you know, just to maintain um, a healthy feet is to not let them sit in shoes and socks all day, right? So having a change of socks, having a change of shoes throughout the day is going to be a massive benefit for them because what can happen is you know, sweat and basically liquid will get trapped in between layers of skin and then that that water, that liquid needs to get out and so it'll end up cracking and blistering and stuff and then it's really uncomfortable. So to prevent anything like that, um, doing some simple things like wearing more natural, uh, like cotton socks or things like that and then changing them is going to be a massive uh, improvement in their foot health, right? And if you're a runner, you might look at look uh, at uh, putting on some sort of antiperspirant sort of spray or powder onto your feet before you do like running, for example, right? So anyway, um, after you are able to settle your mind and relax and sort of get back into feeling comfortable with life, this issue tends to disappear. So um, wet, sweaty, damp feet. Um, it's just, you know, it's kind of living in fear all the time of what's going to happen, what's going to get them, or, you know, in their mind, what's going to happen next, sort of um, mentality, always thinking about that. So um, relaxing and living life in the present is really going to help with the feet as well. Okay, and the last one I want to look at, since we already looked at wet and damp, so opposite of that, we're going to look at dry. So really dry feet. I mean, when you touch them, they're not moist at all. They're, they're in fact, I feel like you need to be more gentle with people that have uh, dry skin because you can really, like it's, you can irritate it quite quickly, right? People who have damp skin and stuff and, you know, to natural, to, to normal, I should say, um, levels of, you know, feet should be moist, but not to the point where they're they're dripping wet or to the point where there's like, you know, a desert on their foot, right? So the skin can be really thin feeling and also you don't want to stretch it and stuff without, you know, using oils or, th or creams or things like that, right? So just be careful when you're working with somebody who has really dry skin, right? But this has to do with, um, uh, overstressed adrenal gland, right? Because the adrenal glands, their job is to keep the skin moist and pliable, right? So if you're really feeling the foot and it feels really dry and um, needs, <laughs> needs it's screaming for some kind of cream or lotion to be put on them, um, then yeah, there's probably something going on with the uh, adrenal glands, right? So, and it could be some, like also maybe some thyroid issues as well. Um, so it's very good to, if you have really dry feet and stuff, to just check in with your doctor and get um, some tests done uh, to check, to make sure that, you know, your adrenal glands and your thyroids, is, everything's functioning properly, right? So there you go, dry feet. Um, you know, easy solution with that is to keep them moist and, uh, nourished that way, right? So dry feet.
So as you can see, you can tell a lot from temperature and the feel of the feet. And by, like I said already, it's a broken record, but you know, feeling at the very beginning of a session or even during a session, you can do this little three step, three area check-in. You can find out um, how it's working. So I've noticed some people that have really cold toes or cold center or something like that, when I'm working on them in a, a session, I'll feel again and halfway through it'll be all even and that's great because you know that you're bringing good circulation to the feet and they are responding well to a reflexology session and it might be good for them to um, have regular reflexology sessions as well as they will also know that when they came in their feet were feeling kind of all cramped up and cold in certain areas and stuff and then they leave knowing that they're feeling all relaxed and um, warm. So that's also a really good indication for them to know that uh, getting their feet worked on is, has been a benefit, right? So I think it's really good to um, talk with clients and let them know. It's like, oh, I'm feeling your toes are a little bit cold. How do you feel about that? And then they'll respond. And then at the end of the session going, hey, how do your toes feel now? And uh, if they've warmed up, right? That way there's some kind of um, rapport and also when you're feeling good, I don't know about you, but when you're feeling good, you don't really notice that uh, you felt bad before, right? I know when you're, when I'm feeling bad, uh, it's really obvious, but when I'm feeling good again, I don't think about that, you know, my shoulders are really tight or something like that, right? It's kind of like my shoulders just feel great. And so when you're feeling really good, you don't make a connection sometimes because we're feeling good, where when we're in pain, we definitely notice it, right? So bringing at the beginning of a session and talking a little bit with your clients about, you know, where they're tight or where they're kind of like that, and then checking in again with them at the end of a session and seeing how they're doing, that way it kind of like connects the dots saying, yes, okay, working on your feet has been a benefit, right? So that's, you know, kind of a cool thing to do, get in the habit of, at least that's what um, I have been doing and it seems to be working well, because it also lets me know that I'm doing something that I'm affecting the feet and um, their well-being, right? So that's really great. Um, yeah, that's all I have today. So you can get a lot of information from uh, temperature in feet and also texture and dampness and things like that, right? So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, some more information, of course, there's a lot, lot more to, to work with and play with in this uh, world of reflexology. Um, so yeah, just thought I'd share that with you today. So if you have any um, great insights on temperature, um, love to hear about it uh, below in the comments so other people can read about it. So yeah, until next time, this is Adam Thomas from Balancing Touch. Remember to keep these feet happy. Well, foot. No, keep both of your feet happy. Um, till next time. Bye-bye. If you're interested in learning more about reflexology, you could subscribe to the channel below. It's also very helpful to hit that like button and feel free to share it with anybody who you think might be interested in it. You can find my online courses, reflexology charts, and other reflexology goodies over on my website, which is balancingtouch.ca. Thank you so much for watching today, and if you have some more time, you can check out some other videos. Till next time, this is Adam Thomas from balancingtouch.ca. See you later.